Good morning. My name is Megan Edwards of Focus Communications, and today we're getting another update from Alora Resources, which trades on the TSXV exchange under the symbol ELO. Join me again today is Alora's Executive VP of Exploration, Dr. Bill Pearson. Bill, thanks for your time this morning. My pleasure. Delighted to be here. So to start things off, Bill, could you give our listeners an introduction to Alora Resources and your ISCA ISCA project in Bolivia? Yeah, absolutely. A uh, pleasure to talk about a really emerging world-class opportunity in ISCA ISCA. It's a major silver tin uh, polymetallic resource. Uh, of course, our forward-looking statements here uh, caution. And what really sets ISCA ISCA apart is we're in the famous Bolivian tin belt. Uh, we published in <coughs> In uh, October, a, a very large initial inferred resource. We have two major zones, a, a polymetallic silver zinc lead domain, which has over half a billion tons, runs about 14 grams silver, 0.73 zinc, 0.28 lead, and a, a tin domain, which is adjacent to it and to the west. Uh, which has 110 million tons, 0.12 tin, 14 grams silver, and 0.14 uh, lead. The important thing, which I'll talk a little bit more, is there's a nice higher grade core in this, and I'll explain why it is higher grade, and it actually doesn't have anything to do with the uh, uh, geology. Now, we used NSR, our consultant's Micon. A lot of people don't understand NSR, but I think the thing you want to look at is uh, what is the NSR cutoff because that's essentially your operating cost. We've just uh, released some new results from our definition drilling program, which are very encouraging. We have metallurgical testing going on on ore sorting at Tomra and uh, Wardle Armstrong, and we've started working on a, a preliminary economic. Uh, assessment. It's been a busy year for Loro, um, where we've seen the company release your maiden resource estimate, followed by the accelerated development towards the PEA. As a recap for your audience, could you give us an overview of some of your ISCA ISCA resource highlights, and more notably the higher grade polymetallic domain where you've been focusing on some of your latest work? Uh, abs absolutely here. Um, so we're sitting in this famous uh, Bolivian tin belt here, as you can see on this drawing here, we're down in Southern uh, Bolivia. And this part of the Bolivian tin belt is known for tin and silver. Of course, on the North end, the famous Cerro Rico, which is by far the largest silver deposit on the planet has mined some 2 billion ounces. And we're sitting down here in, in the middle, you can see Isca Isca, Isca Isca right here, just circle it here. And uh, Cherokee is a tin deposit. So tin, silver are important commodities. So if we look at our, our resource here, this is our resource table here. This is a 3D model, um, just showing you the different uh, uh, categories. It's, it was basically done in two domains. So on the on the east and south end, you have the very large polymetallic silver zinc lead domain. Uh, that had a total predominantly open pit of 560 million tons, just under 14 grams silver, uh, 0.28 lead, 0.73 uh, zinc. And this pit, that defines this resource is 1.4 kilometers in diameter. It's huge. And it extends 750 meters below the Santa Barbara Hill. The other fact that's very important is the stripping ratio is fantastic. It's one to one. And that's based on 139 holes uh, totaling around 96,000 uh, meters. And you can see the very significant in situ metal here, we're talking almost 300 million ounces silver, uh, 4 million tons zinc, and uh, 1.74 million tons of lead, and about 130,000 tin. Now, the tin domain, 
which is to the west, is smaller. It's still 110 million uh, tons, which, by the way, according to the tin, World Tin Association, would be the 10th largest undeveloped tin deposit in the world. And it has about 0.1 to 10, 0.14 uh, lead and, and similar silver to our polymetallic zone, just over 14. But as I'll show you, when we go into the high grade area, um, which is our current focus, it's really, really an important that you understand, your readers understand, your listeners, sorry, understand what's behind these numbers. What do the numbers really mean? And now, when you explore, your number one requirement is to get into a really, really strong mineralizing system. Because if you want to find a big deposit, get in a big system. Well, we've proven beyond the, re the doubt that ISC is a huge system. The problem is that phase of the work, which is the fine by wide space drilling, much of our drilling is 100 meter centers. While it defines the system, it doesn't accurately define what the grade really is. In fact, it seriously underestimates the grade. So we are now focusing our attention here on this red area here you can see in this cross section. This is the higher grade portion of this deposit. And it's not a geologically different thing. It's all to do with the fact we have a lot more drilling there. And when you look at how the mineralization occurs, it occurs in veins, vein breaches, veinlets. There's not a lot in the actual wall rock hosting it. And these veins and vein work, veinlets and so forth form a kind of a network. The average trend is, is an azimuth about 300 degrees, which is west, uh, northwest. So in this high grade zone, we have 132 million tons, which is still a very substantive deposit, uh, grading 1.11% zinc, 0.5% lead, and 24.3 gram silver. So you can see the difference between that grade and the overall general resource grade. And you'll say, okay, what's different? Well, what's different is we have much tighter drilling that gives us a much better estimate of grade, particularly for silver. Uh, silver occurs in these west-northwest structures. Uh, it's not spread evenly out. And we, when we hit these silver structures, they have hundreds up to sometimes as much as a thousand grams per silver. And obviously, uh, when we hit these, that sort of grade really jumps your overall silver grade. As we tighten up the drill spacing, our odds of hitting these things increase. And that's exactly what you're seeing in our current definition drill program, and you're seeing in the higher grade area relative to the rest of the resource. And I know this is the higher grade target for the company, but we're looking at some significant silver results in the starter pit. Does this change Aloro's internal target for the deposit, or do you now have the view that this resource could actually grow substantially? Oh, there's no doubt in my mind it will grow. Uh, I think when you look at our 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 results here and that we just came out. I mean, we had a spectacular silver number, um, you know, 239 grams silver per ton, uh, about a half a percent lead and a very interesting 0.43 tin over 62 meters. And, and this core length here is probably about 80% of true width. So this is a very, very substantive number and and when you look through the rest of the results and there's a lot of them in that press release the thing that jumps out is silver 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 um so we're going to see definitely uh i believe 
uh, an increase in grade. That was the object of, of the program, to upgrade the resource, partly because there were holes in the original drilling that we, for example, hole 61, which is the one we got this really major hit on, and in fact was drilled in a relatively low grade area in the model. And it just highlights again, we need more drilling density to define what the true grade is. So these first holes were for the most part filling holes. Uh, the next set of six holes are more step outs. We're not doing big step outs. We're going no more than about 50 meters. Uh, and I'm looking forward to those uh, results because between our fill in holes and our step out holes, I think you will see more tons defined, and I think you will see the grade uh, going up. That's certainly my expectation. And if we projected this over the whole deposit, we know no matter where we drill, uh, we're going to hit the background, the system. The eventual grade, we estimate, is very dependent on how many of these high-grade zones we hit. We just need more detailed drilling. Uh, there is a point where the statistics come on side and you need around a 40, 50 meter uh, drill spacing. The 100 meter gets you the system. The 40 to 50 starts to get uh, the grade. And the other thing too, we still haven't defined the limits of the system. It's still open. Even though we have a pit that's 1.4 kilometers long, we haven't closed anything off. And the polymetallic deposit has all the right ingredients for a highly profitable mine, but what about the tin polymetallic domain at Iska Iska? Can you discuss what the next steps are for this deposit area? Well, the tin domain is, is a very, very interesting target. You know, that initial resource is based on relatively limited drilling. Uh, what it needs is just get some drills in there, drill it off, I'm quite convinced you'll see the similar effect that we see in the polymetallic zone, where with more drilling, we'll see more highs as we get deeper and more into the primary uh, original uh, tin porphyry, which we haven't conclusively located yet. We have an idea where it may be from the magnetics, but we need to confirm that with drilling. Uh, you'll see that tin resource grow, but I think more importantly, you will see the grade going up. You know, and we have some holes in there. We had one hole that had 3% over nine meters. And, uh, you know, I, I recently visited uh, uh, Turoke, which is a, a tin deposit about 40 kilometers northwest of uh, Iska Iska. And it, it's what... Um, you know, our, Oswaldo, our, say our general manager, who's an expert on Bolivian tin, believes could be a model for what we might find a little deeper down in this disk. And there you have very wide zones that run 0.3, 0 0.4% uh, tin with massive tin veins. I, I was in their office lifting one of these things up. It's incredible. Um, that's the type of mineralization I think we'll find a little bit deeper and to the west. And we have uh, essentially no drilling on the west side. So uh, the tin is a huge target for us, but it it's, needs a lot more drilling. We're much, much further ahead on the polymetallic side than we are on the tin side. And one thing you touched on is recent test work with Tomra. Can you briefly provide an update on work being completed there? Well, that's uh, that work has been uh, is being finished off. Uh, we did the uh, ore sorting test at, at uh, Tomra. Basically, we we drilled three metallurgical holes. Uh, we sent about eight tons or so sample to Tomra. So this is also a really good bulk test. Uh, the majority of the work was focused on the metallic zone, and we did one hole on the tin side. Um, that went through the tests in Tom Tomra, which uh, look, look, certainly look quite promising. And now it's the concentrate is shipped, has been shipped over to Wardle Armstrong. 
and we're just waiting for the final results results from the metallurgical tests there and and our metallurgist uh mike hollywell who's a an expert uh metallurgist especially tin and also he's uh um worked on five of these uh, ore sorting projects and he's he's currently doing the uh metallurgical work for uh, South Crofty uh, for Cornish Metals. So uh, he's going to put all that together. So you'll see results on that out uh, early in the new year. But we certainly believe ore sorting is a massive game changer. You know, our, our initial tests suggest that we can eliminate at least 40% of the waste. Um, which is huge. And what people haven't understood is when you eliminate 40% of the waste, that means uh, the material you're sending into your concentrator plant is in fact almost double the grade you went in. And that that's a feature people haven't really uh, appreciated. So if you were uh, mining 50,000 tons a day, you only have to mill uh probably 20 25,000 or so or a little more uh that's a huge cost saving lowers capital uh and the metal loss is relatively uh, minimal uh the other thing that people don't seem to appreciate is how rapidly this uh uh technology is advancing uh Tomer has some 320 plants installed all over the world. They're on six continents. Uh, their largest one is a phosphate operation in Saudi Arabia, which is producing, uh, has 10 machines. It's uh, producing about, or mining, I should say, processing about 40,000 tons a day. Uh, that's up in the sort of order of magnitude that ISCA ISCA will likely end up in. So this isn't a little, uh, um, small thing you're doing in the laboratory. This is a, a fantastic industrial process. And when you see the particles flying across the screen and every single particle is assessed, it's zapped with the X-ray and the computer figures out where the dense materials are and where the less dense are. And then it tells the uh, the air gun, okay, this particle goes in the orb in this go. And this whole process is happening in microseconds. It's absolutely phenomenal how it's advanced. And you'll see this technology just grow in leaps and bounds and, and be used more and more over the years. Uh, Minsur down in uh, southern Peru, which is the northern end of the Bolivian tin belt, is using this technology extremely successfully. So um, we're very, very keen on it, and you'll see results from that. We have some more um, geophysical results that we'll get out in the early in the new year, and of course, we'll have results from the remaining definition drill program. So we're finishing the year very strong here, and we're going to be off to a, uh, a strong start early in the new year uh, to set up uh, what I think will be a terrific 2024 for our company. Absolutely. Well, thanks again for your time today, Bill. And we look forward to having you back on soon for another update on Aloro. Absolutely. Look forward to it and uh, best wishes for a wonderful holiday season for everyone and your listeners. And thanks again for having us. Thank you so much. Have a great day.